all right what is up guys welcome back to another episode here with noto golf it got your boy here subliminal golf boy here brent golf your boy here 18 hole cole here to give you a breakdown of this week's tournament uh the zozo championship um out there in Japan. um let's go ahead and uh start with the weather breakdown here boys we're getting into that weather. It's it's going to be a little crazy over the weekend, not going to lie. Thursday is going to be, what, light winds? Five to five to eight, something like that, it said. But coming into Friday, it's really going to really gonna put some pressure on the boys out there. It's uh, going to be howling. I believe it was up to 10 to 15. Brenty, do you have it open? Yeah, uh, no, it's way more than that. Oh, it, it got higher? Yeah, they were projecting up 20 yeah, miles Yeah, Thursday is gonna be around thursday was the five to ten then ten all day okay a little bit calmer in the morning friday uh starting about 12 it's over 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 37 miles per hour yikes that is the windy. morning is bad too but definitely way easier um 13 off around like 8 30 or 8 45 <laughs> each day so right around 9 a.m is 18 miles per hour winds so i mean it's gonna be windy all day on friday but if the course is softer that'll help in the morning friday morning thursday if you get the guys that go out early on thursday probably have the best conditions um before the cut but friday afternoon is gonna be the hardest for sure the first two days just to clarify, too, there isn't a cut this week. However, this format is. It's only a no. tournament. Yeah. It's a little smaller. Anybody can kind of win this. Yeah, uh, so can make choices a little more interesting, knowing that people aren't, aren't going to get cut. So taking that information, Brent, just threw at you all the course conditions and weather. If this is your guys' first time tuning in, basically what we do here is live sim. The course conditions that are going to be going to be happening this week at the course, and we try and get as much insight on the course as we can, basically, to see you know who's who might have any upper edge uh, of possibly winning or just gaining strokes, and hopefully you guys you know get some info and get some better picks out of it. Yeah, so sorry if you didn't see my face wind. there. I had a nice little itch. We have a southwest wind; it's pretty heavy, so we put the winds on high firm conditions besides that yeah so we'll yeah, just they're saying that they're uh tending to the greens to be rolling at about a 12 and a half this uh this week which is going to be pretty fast considering uh high wind high wind and we, we do have firm on a lot of it as well so it should be playing pretty true anyway let's get into the uh gameplay here just kind of let it start us on that one. You're gonna have to lead us on the gameplay here because I can't see it. Uh, watching on YouTube. Yeah, you'll well. just have to go on YouTube, I guess, to watch for now. Um, but kind of looking at hole one, nothing too crazy to it. Although, as you can tell, winds are already kind of picking up as the day goes on. It's only gonna get higher. Um, I do remember the first hole being fairly straightforward mm -hmm. and one of the easier greens I remember. As I do remember playing this, I haven't heard it talked about on any, any other channels or anything I've read yet, but these greens and, and the slopes and undulations on them have, have been quite crazy. So I feel like it's going to come down to who can roll the rock as well. There is... There's so much undulation on these greens if this is playing pretty true to the course. Yeah, sticking it on the green and making putts is going to be huge, especially on the good weather days. Uh, I uh, I was also reading, I mean, it's not really a very long course overall, so it's, it's so, so, going to be really anybody's game, Oh yeah, so, long hitter or not. Coming up on hole two right now, it's 348 yard par four, but depending on wind direction, if it does stay true to the southeast and it's, you know, it's howling, I, I put a driver in my hand, and this was this was reachable just because of the wind alone. 
played it a little short. I didn't really play extra power, to, trying to be pretty true to it, and that wind just held it up in the air forever. Yeah, I went the short route. Not even, there. not even a good swing, and it still got there easily. Pin high just left, but again, going back to what we've been reading out there and looking into, and it does give the uh, longer hitters a little advantage on some of the holes here for sure. A couple of holes that can actually go for it versus others. I mean, if that wind gusts at 36 miles per hour on Friday afternoon, they can probably get three wood there. It's if it's gusting 20, 25, yeah. Some of the I mean, hitters. just because it's going to carry so far, yeah. You'll see. Uh, I don't see too many holes where they're actually going to want to go for it, though. I mean, there's only one par four that I'm looking at. Hole two that's 360 yards. Everything else is plus. Yeah, a lot of the holes play straight into the wind, though. It, yeah, for the most so part. You're going to want to hit a big drive. I don't remember that hole. I'm tempted to with that wind. I can just imagine like someone hitting it off the toe, 280 in the rough, having 200 in, and just saying "fuck this." <laughs> I'm so over this one. Okay. You get a decent. <laughs> Why did I fly all the way to Japan? Right. Yeah, Japan's beautiful this time. Nobody's gonna be mad about that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are gonna be stoked that. Well, you said there's no cut. I mean, I totally missed that. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> there's no cut. <laughs> But yeah, obviously in uh, in no cuts, my favorite personal play is Xander. He does like Japan as well. But it's kind of yeah. hard to fit. There's Xander, a few names. Ricky or Zandy and Minwoo. I feel like Minwoo's got a poster boys. Minwoo's going to be a poster boy, same as Xander. Well, yeah, Minwoo's coming off that win from this last week on his. Uh, his Imagine Akshay and the World Tour tournament. Imagine Akshay and Thigala too are both kind of coming off their wins recently. Still playing some pretty good golf, especially with only uh, having sixteen. Especially with, especially with Akshay's only having sixteen. A, wasn't that right before the Ryder Cup? That was a while ago. Yeah, but he's still probably playing good golf since then. I imagine still coming off a win within a month. He's definitely in my player pool. I always play Akshay. Anyone that gets helped by George Jenkins. Does anyone want to look up his last few rounds? See what he's done after that win? Because he's got to be playing in the smaller tournaments. Yeah, I don't actually know what he's been up to lately. I'm... Latest. That. He played Shriners last week. He was 11 under. Yeah, I kind of figured he was still kind of cruising through his role. What was the leader on the end of the tournament? Where'd they finish? Tom Kim won, I think, like. What is 20, he? 20, 21. Okay. 20. So what was that for him? I didn't. I didn't get the name. Was like a top 10, top 20. Tied for 35. Uh, yeah. A lot of people went low there. Last couple of weeks, tied for 35th, tied for 43rd, cut, missed the cut. So in my eyes, this course plays a lot like that BMW Championship did a few months back, especially since they had, except for the rain part, but they did have some crazy wins going out there. Um, and BMW was all about fairway must and approaches because this it's, kind of, it's similar to this. I feel like if you're not close on your approach, these undulations are going to kill you on the green. Yeah. So rolling back to like a BMW, had a few people shooting six, seven under in those kind of conditions. I think you, uh, yeah, you could probably see who, something similar, probably. Back on who was playing. We had a lot of better people that was, you know, trying to hit the top 50 or whatever, trying to break it down. So I that mean, was. I know the one name that's been sticking out a lot lately has been Cam. It's just how well he's been. 
was doing well back in that turn as well. I think people are looking at Cameron Champ too, just because he hits the ball a bit further. I like both of them. I really like Cam Davis this whole season. He's going to win, I think, multiple tournaments. Pretty good form, that's for sure. Yeah, he's awesome with the driver. Any course that features a driver, he's going to be up there. I mean, I'll... I like him in the wind, too. Not 100% dialed, and I'm still three under through seven. Just to show you, it could be a pretty low. I guess it could be pretty low if someone's someone's really just out there lights out. Which kind of always happens with someone. So I was reading it said uh, we only have what sixteen of the top fifty players in this tournament. Mm -hmm. I only saw about six of those names. Who else is? Uh, I'm not, I can't leave the screen for the stream right now either, so. Yeah, I can read down the DraftKings. Maybe we just kind of go through some some of the picks as we watch this tournament. <laughs> My tournament here. <laughs> so Xander is the most expensive. And then Morikawa, M, Fowler, Matsuyama, Davis, Scott, and then... Last year's winner, Keegan Bradley. Keegan's looking and the, good. And then Minouli is right under him. So. I'd say four names to look out for within the top 15 this coming up week. Realistic, like maybe five. I mean, with roster construction, you can maybe fit three of the 9K guys. But if you want Xander... I don't. I don't think I'm gonna play M. I don't know if I'm gonna play Morikawa. I like Fowler. Gotcha. If you're gonna play one of those guys, you have to play someone in the six Ks or a couple people in the seven Ks, bottom seven Ks. Oh, well, absolutely. So that's where Champ is. Absolutely. There's some cheaper guys that have been playing well lately to to look out for this week too. There's yeah. That, uh, that young Swedish guy I was reading about, Vincent Norman. And uh, playing pretty well lately. Let's see where is he at? I'm guessing he's pretty cheap. I haven't. He's 8400. Oh, oh, he's up there this week, huh? Mm -hmm. Definitely up there. Since I mean, he's been playing well. We got Adam Svens is another one that's been looking good for this week as well. 8,200. That pot was Could insane. Up there. Well, we're halfway through the simulation <laughs> right now. And through nine holes, I finished at four under. I think Brent, he finished at two under, which is, in my eyes, pretty realistic to what's going to be going down here. Although, I did the wind get gnarlier as the day went on, so now we're hitting the back nine. It's probably really, really howling. Yeah, so this is one where you got to hit driver. Oh, yeah, I, put, I, I got that push to the very end. I got nice and lucky there. Had a nice 50-yard little little pitch in. That's one of the most scorable holes on the I remember I cut the audio out, obviously, for us to talk over, but I do remember saying as I hit that hole, too, this is probably the most scorable hole on the course. There was probably three or four that I'd say are birdie. Like, you have to birdie no matter what. Yeah, I mean, there is no wind. Someone would shoot ten under. Easily, someone can shoot ten under. Yeah, it's not a long. So, it's not that long of a course either. So yeah, I agree with that. Like Saturday afternoon looks prime, and Sunday is gonna be prime. So someone that can just last through the wind, and then. That has a good course fit, which is mainly I like proximity see, to the hole. I, this, I, 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 see, I see Xander having a great 
great weekend. I really do. He's not. He's not. He's not as expensive as he should be at all. He's not eleven thousand in this tournament. He's easily the best golfer here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, I think he's gonna have a, a very good week. It seems kind of like designed for him almost. I feel like Morikawa so, can keep up as long as he's striking the ball well, but we know he's either shows up or doesn't. Yeah. It's all, I feel like a lot of this for the golfers will be a day one thing, seeing where they're at and how they're. And usually, I like to fade. I usually like to fade golfers off a win, but something about Minwoo Lee strikes me as. Like not the guy that's gonna go out and party after he wins. He's gonna try to win the next weekend. Dude, Minwoo Lee is always trying to continue to cook. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. He is a master chef in the kitchen, and his spatula is hot. Spatula is hot. Let him cook. Let him cook. So yeah, I mean, it's I'm gonna try to do it. Fowler and Minwoo with Xander, 6,600. It's doable. There's some really sketchy plays down here, though. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> like as Bobby always. Shelton, Satoshi Kadaira. Those are some names I recognize. David Lingmurth. I mean, these tournaments are and more fun Bally. when it's not the top of the top. Everyone's trying to prove themselves still. Like to well, see doesn't it. this tournament um, doesn't a lot of this tournament rely on schedule for next year on how they finish finish this 2022 2023 season off say that again just the first um, part not that how they finished this off. tournament is this tournament I'm pretty sure is determining for a lot of people what tournament yeah, like they're going to be allowed in next year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. That's what most of the smaller tournaments are there for. So Yeah, season. no, I'm pretty sure this is the one, though. Yeah, okay, yeah, it makes sense. Like the last one. I think Hostler is, like, right on the edge. <sighs> I don't like think that. Hostler is consistent enough at golfing. Yeah, but... When, but Maybe for the I Corn mean, Fairy Tour. He's going to show up on a week where, it, where it'll matter for him, though, to... Who knows? He, I mean, he certainly could. I mean, I've watched that man play golf, and he can certainly go lights out. I mean, he's on the radar in, in the in the tour power rankings for this week. So hole fourteen, real quick. Sorry, you got a, a long par five, one of the longer ones on the course. I hit a great drive, and I'm still two seventy, two eighty out. You think any of the longer hitters are get? I don't see any of the longer hitters getting there. But going for that in two and being just short. Still gives you a great leave with only a 14-yard little chip. I mean, so does leaving it 50 yards short in the fairway. That's true. This is just a birdie hole. Yeah. I mean, just trying to see if that straight. would play towards longer hitters, but seeing that I didn't get there. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not buying into the whole longer being a longer hitter is going to benefit you on the course. There's a uh, probably five or six holes where if you whip out a driver and you're known to hit it a bit longer, you're going to have 50 yards or less in, or sorry, like 60 to 70 yards are in. And then most of the other people will be lining up probably 130. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's risky. It's, it's a lot of gamble, but I definitely see it as being a reward. And let's be honest, the guy, the main man, Rick Rungood doesn't usually lie to us. I'll take his key points to heart any day. Shout out. Shout out, Rick Rungood. Shout out. All right, so I'm going to take a look at round two in the morning, guys. See if there's any, like, people that stand out. Um, Hayden Buckley, 856. That's the second tee time. Ben Griffin's on the first tee time in the morning. Both guys. I like Bo Hostler a little bit I, I if he's on the edge. Um, we got Nick Taylor. I feel like he's going to go overlooked for sure. He won last year. So Heath is going off early. Nicky Taylor won what last year? This tournament? I thought Keegan won this. No. 
No, no, he just won last year. Well, just a tournament. A tournament. Okay. Yeah. When are the when are the winds expected to pick up? Uh, I mean, I know it's going to be high winds. So this all was a uh, like. Friday, but... On Friday. On Friday, yeah, for on sure, Friday, like noon. When were, they, when were they expecting to pick up like substantially? It was after... I know it's picking up all day on Friday. But... Afternoon, right? Like evening, or, like late afternoon, early yeah. evening, like two. I mean, it says nine a.m. eighteen, and then twelve. Is like twenty-one, and then three p.m. twenty-three. Yeah, so like noon, it really gets towards that holy shit, it's windy part. Yeah. So Friday morning. That didn't break at all. I mean, it's not that big of an edge because it's still very windy in the morning. Yeah, it's so, tough, no matter what. I mean, mm. AM on Thursday is decent. It's better. But there's no cut, so. You know, all we have to go off is the first two tee times. We just don't really want someone. This is a big intuition. Teeing off around ten on Thursday and then teeing off late on Friday. Yeah, Friday early is all I can think of for being beneficial. I think you know that's an automatic fade is. Let's see who falls into that. All right, y'all want to get some some mocks going real quick? We're about to about to finish up on the gameplay here. Through seventeen, myself finished. Well, I'm I'm eight under, and Brenty's three under. I think eight under was an incredible score for these wins. I will be honest. A lot of big names playing later in the day, on Friday. The wind and helping that drive, though. Not just the wind, yeah, you know, made this par five approachable. Putting an iron in hand instead of a three wood. Where's Minwoo? Nine forty a.m. on Friday. The earlier, the better. So that's not terrible. So let's see. Where is he on? Thursday. <laughs> no break. A little birdie to end it off. Yeah, see, All that's right. going to be tough to want to go with anybody later than him because that's already pushing it. And 10 a lot 57. Of he has a second to last tee time on Thursday. Who? Min? Minwoo. Min. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, he is like in the worst spot. For, thurs but for Thursday. People are going to fade that. All right. Yeah, I mean. Let's just say it took a 92% fairway in regulation and a 94% green in regulation to shoot a 61. Nine under on this course. That's almost 100%, yeah. and I'm only 9 on. This is, it's a tough course. It's a tough course. It's going to factor everything in, honestly, especially with the wind. Let's let's go through some drafts real quick, some mockies, and see what you guys, see what each person's kind of feeling, give some insight, and then call this one, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I love Xander. I think I'm not going to play Fowler or Min Wu Lee with him if I do play him. But I'm going to start a lineup out with our two guys on the thumbnail, Fowler and Minwoo. I and that leaves 7,700 left for each person, the rest of the people. So... I'll put my money in later for all this again. No. Just plug in Ash K. I think we all like him. Yeah. And then I'm looking lower. I kind of like Hayden Buckley. I'm not playing champ. There's no, there's no way. This is not a course for him, in my opinion. I think so, huh? Getting overhyped this week. 
All right, I got I mean, mine up. Just like you said, you didn't think distance was that important. I think it is important, but I think that's all he has. So run me down your line. I got it up here. I'll put it in so they can see the salary cap and see the lineup. And I'm just looking uh, Fowler, Minwuli, Batia as kind of our core. Fowler, Lee, Batia. Okay. I don't see him yet, but I will find him. There he is. So champ, I always think of champ like rocket mortgage, you know, drive the ball straight and far. And then mm -hmm. even if you're in the rough, it's like easy to deal with rough. I've heard the rough is pretty hard here. So he's an instant X for me. Who was that? Sorry, I missed that. That was one. champ. I'm Cameron still champ's champ. Oh, from... I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can agree with that. Um, on these harder, like, you know, you're getting down these harder courses with around the green and hard rough to deal with. I like Hardy down low. I like Ben Griffin. I think Higo is going to have a good year. They're kind of propping him up to be one of Titleist's main guys. You like Svensson, you like Norman. What do you like about Svensson and Norman? Um, I was just reading they've been playing well lately. What was it? Uh, Norman's got... Uh, he's what? 15 and greens hit, tied for 7th, par 5 scoring. Um, got a title at the Horizon Irish Open recently. You know, I do always see him getting eagles. And if it's a no cut, so there's a lot of eagle opportunities. Here's, out here's a little thing for Svensson just to back up Josh's claim on him playing good. His last four tournaments, he's had three top 20s. That's pretty good. He's heading the right direction. He's playing some good golf. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, Svensson's looking good. Not going to disagree with him there. Some of the names why down do, here. Why is Taylor Moore sticking out to me, though? I always like playing him. I don't know why. And then when I play Taylor Moore, I always play Adam Shank also. That would leave <laughs> Adam 8, Shank's in. been awesome. All right. Um, Adam Shank has been awesome. No, I, I totally agree with that. I'm looking at some of these names. I'm not familiar with all of them, so a little research is in order. I wouldn't have There's... enough to afford Norman or Spenson. I'd play Shank and more. Enough names on here to see stuff. Let's uh, let's get like two mocks filled out for these viewers, and then give like two or three fades. I gotta get out of here. Wife's calling me in the on the phone. I like your start though with Fowler, Lee, and Batia for anyone looking to build a good solid little base core. That, in my eyes, is. Very, very solid core. Fowler can definitely be in and out with others. Minwoo, I, th I think Minwoo and Batia must, are a must, I will say. Batia has been just trending towards the right direction for, I think, months now. After he after that first PGA event he won down in, Mex not Mexico, or on some island or something. I can't remember exactly where it was. Ever Where'd since I've it? seen him get the, his first, the Barracuda Championship or whatever it was, he got his first win, and he's been just kind of playing some great golf since then. Um, I do have a crazy question. Yes. Do you guys think that in your same lineup, you should play anyone from the same tee time? Or do you think only one per tee time? I don't. Let me pull up. I don't think that makes a difference, personally. But I'm just pulling up two times real quick, and I would say just based on pairings, maybe. I don't know. I don't see any issues with going same same tea time, yeah. but I guess it depends on the group vibes, right? Let's, That's what I'm saying. The let's... vibes, like. Let's talk about some vibes. Taylor Moore, Kurt Kitayama, Xander Shoffley. 
Just good vibes or bad vibes? I don't know enough about the other two. That's good. But... That's good vibes. Yeah, I'm picking up good vibes. No, that's that's good vibes. Looking at this, mm, Akshay as a person too seems pretty social down to earth. I don't see many people not liking grouping up with him. Looking through these names, I don't know one really that I could see just. And now, if we had more of the top fifty players in here and you got them paired together, absolutely. Sahith, Sung J M, and maybe that just kind of not a vibe for Sahith, but. It's got some JM and Kato Onishishi. Oni, Onishi? <laughs> I gotta pronounce that right. Onishi. Nick Taylor, JM Tong. Nick Taylor's got a vibe of a group with Hoagie and JJ Spun. That's pretty sweet. I don't see anything too too bad Are group we... wise. I think you're gonna be safe going multiple from a similar or same tea time. What about anyone from Japan? Hideki, this Onishi guy. <laughs> Hideki is Hideki. You can never count Hideki out. Personally. (laughs) It's a home game for Hideki. But I'm sure a lot of the other... Kadaira could go low Thursday morning. He's playing with two people that are probably going to be giving him reads all day. You got Matsuyama, Nakashima, Onishi, Hitsasune, Hirata. There's There's a lot of local... Japanese natives that'll be playing in this tournament that will probably have somewhat of an edge too, so that is something else to take in mind. For all we know, this could be Hideki's tournament. I certainly don't think it's going to be, but That's crazy. That if is Hideki crazy. won. The what the Hideki one? If Hideki won, yeah. I just made pretty good lineup all right so we all are we all in agreement with kind of a, a base base core for people to use around I mean, a, around think... a fowler libatio or a, or a fowler fowler thagala batia or a min Wu thagala batia something we don't even have to have top five in there this means nothing to those people if you remember too i feel like this tournament doesn't mean yeah much. i mean a core is like three people i mean i really think you think Fowler's? Fowler Lee. I, Fowler was like second last year, wasn't he? He likes this place. Yeah, plays well here. Yeah. Minwoo's playing super well. And I think Bati is playing super well. Yeah, yeah. I just and think then... Tagal is another name I would personally put up with my core if I didn't have one of those three. I'm just trying to give a little more insight for them. Um, what about the vibes, dude? I thought you said the vibes were off in his group. Yeah, I said I don't know about his vibes. I was mm. like, he's playing with Sungjae and Kaito and Ishii. It just seems Japanese and South Korean. I don't know. Yeah, They're just... probably gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're beefing already. Let's hope not. But I just, you know, doesn't are they really gonna talk? Are they really gonna vibe? Is he just gonna be in his head because of that? <laughs> Who knows? Oh man, I forgot I had this light this whole time. Um. Let's oh, yeah. say no, nice. Keegan. Dark. I'm just going to get this up there for uh, showing a five. Kitayama, no, man, can't. I uh, can't more, no. Hey, Lashley, right? Hey, give, your, <laughs> give your core. Are you going to fade? I'm, I, I'm, the same, I'm the same lead with you. I'm not going to give my core. This is my core. They don't get to keep my core. I will give my insight on, on three and a, maybe a rotational, though. But I agree with the three you have there. Rotational players for me out of the – core would be something along the lines of Keegan Bradley, Matsuyama, uh, what am I trying to say right now, Tagala, and probably looking at the list. Uh, you know, I'll give... All right, let's just give our favorite. I think that's going to be uh, the top five. Just kind of, I'm going to build a core with those five. I'm gonna reduce it to three, obviously, and go from there. All right, who, who's your guys' long shot? Just a little long shot. Who's the sleeper? Who's the sleeper? Mm-hmm. Top five, top ten, sleeper. I'm gonna go with uh, the inside we got from Josh's pick earlier, but I'm gonna say either Hostler or Svensson. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with one of the Swedish boys and go with. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna go Alex Norin. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No one's seen anything from Grio or Adam Shank or Tom Hoagie. We're just not liking him right now. 
I always like Adam Shank. I just didn't really find no. a way to fit him in this week. Gotcha. Yeah, he's too expensive. All right, all right. Well, I think I... Satoshi Kadaira is my long shot, though. Okay. From Japan. What's his salary cap? Sixty, sixty-two hundred. Pretty low. That's pretty low. You can make that work into some good lineups too, for sure. I got eight thousand three hundred with Fowler, Lee, Batia, Kadira, and the Gala. So. Let's just say I throw. No, I can't fit Hostler, but I can fit. I can go to a hundred dollars salary remainder with. I mean, that's. That's a pretty good looking five there. I wouldn't wouldn't be mad at that. Cool. All right. Let's anyway, let's hope uh, any of this jibber jabber we do here for you guys helps out, and you guys, uh, you know, keep coming back for more. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. We will, Indeed. Uh, catch you on next week's tournament. Good luck out there, everybody. Peace.